the program from being dynamic. They force artificial early and late dates onto their respective activities. And if not used wisely, they can cause serious problems and the logical integrity of the program may be called into question. Some delay analysts refuse to analyze programs with too many embedded constraints. Constraints can have exceptions and when used should be monitored carefully. For example, release of information, access dates, milestones, etc. However, it is arguable that a separate, clean baseline program without any constraints should always be available to assess impacts of delay events. The American Society of Civil Engineers stated in one of their reports that excessive constraints on activities that interfere with the logic-driven critical path should generally be avoided. In a constraint schedule, total float may be driven by constraint dates instead of the project end date. This becomes even more confusing when multiple constraints are used in the schedule because which constraint date the total float value relates to must be determined as there may be several in the CPM network. As a result, the use of constraints complicates the use of total float as a time prioritizing tool. In general, constraint types are as follows. Start on and finish on constraints will protect the network logic and only drive negative float into the network when their dates are exceeded. Mandatory constraints erases negative float from activities and will move the activities around the schedule without respecting dates calculated based on the original network logic. A mandatory constraint is used, for example, to insert a mandatory finish constraint to the project completion date. The mandatory finish constraint is entered in the projects view under the dates tab. If the project is delayed beyond the mandatory finish date, it generates negative float in the program. In general, constraints should be removed, i.e. set to default as soon as possible ASAP before carrying out a delay analysis. The constraints in MS project are classified as follows. First, flexible constraints. Tasks are not tied to a specific date. This is the default option which is good for delay analysis. Second, semi-flexible constraints. Contains earlier start dates or latest finish dates. Not bad as inflexible constraints, but avoid if possible. And third, you have inflexible constraints. This contains specific start or finish dates. This is a worst case scenario for delay analysis. MS project contains eight constraints in total. And this is a table which lists all of them. You have as late as possible, as soon as possible, start no earlier than, finish no earlier than, start no later than, finish no later than, must finish on and must start on. Let's review the constraints options in MS project. So right click on any activity and choose information. Then click on the advanced tab and all the constraint types are listed in this option right here. The constraint types are identical to the ones listed in the table I showed to you earlier. So let's choose a finish no earlier than constraint and see how it affects the activity. A small icon has appeared here in the information column. Whenever you see it, please be aware that a constraint has been added to your activity. But in general, as mentioned earlier, please do try and avoid constraints.